right. Good morning, everybody. How's everybody doing this morning? Turn to somebody and say, I feel the madness. I am crazy, uh, just encouraged today. How many know uh, this song we sang this morning, Jesus Christ, the Living Hope? How many know that is true? Amen. We want to welcome all of our DC3 family. If you're watching online today, we want to welcome our Northport campus. Love you guys. May I say, by the way, that last week, for the first time, that our Northport campus family broke 400 in attendance last week. Yeah, good, great job, guys. Just an amazing weekend. We watched 23 people be baptized, and just great, crazy stuff is happening all over the DC3 campuses. We are so cool. We watch online. If hundreds of people watch us online, which is really cool, we would rather you be here in proximity to us. But if you're out of town or in another state, we're so glad you're uh, uh, watching us. So this morning we're going to talk about something called madness because here's what I know. As much good stuff is happening around DC3, there's some crazy stuff I'm concerned about. Anybody else in the world today? And if Jesus Christ is the truth, we need to talk about that today. So I want you to turn to somebody and say, here's the truth. You are blessed to sit by me. Madness survey. I did a research question on Facebook and I said, what would you describe as madness in the world today? Here are some of those answers. School and mass shootings. Definitely something that it's just tragic. Uh, our political arena is in a straight state of madness. Chaos, someone put. How many would agree with that statement? Disrespect for others in every way. It's just a madness of that going on. And we can't forget somebody put driving on 41. That is madness. Um, hypocrisy among Christians and those who refuse to help their flock. It's maddening to me. And uh, don't mess up my tablet here, Steve. Hate. Just hate. A lot of hate going on. Uh, there, there's just a lot of stuff going on. I just deleted half my notes, I think. So I get to, to wing it today. No, hold on. I'm going to refresh. There we go. Undo. How many are thankful for the undo button? Note to self, here's truth. Do not use the Word document in an editable form. Send yourself a PDF, right? Madness, people who complain about everything, even the smallest things, when they are real problems in the world every day. I agree with that. Amen. The same person said, I'm changing my answer to people that called 911 because they did not get a receipt from McDonald's. I think that's a true story. But how many know there's so much to be thankful for today? I'm just thankful for you guys being here. Thanks to advances in technology, I get my Bible and notes and everything all in my beautiful iPad here. Uh, we get to transmit live to our Northport campus and to people all around the world, which is pretty cool. Uh, we're better informed and better connected through the Internet than ever before. Advanced travel methods. Uh, I got to tell you, I am living the dream, right? Uh, as a pastor, you know, I, I, I never got in it for the money and all these kind of things. But I'm very blessed. I live over in Punta Gorda, the ranchettes. And how many of if, if, if any ranchettes people in, in the house? All right, come on. I'm a little redneck, and I like to be out in the woods a little bit. So I'm over in the ranchettes with some pine trees and people uh, who don't send me letters for putting stuff in my yard. I won't say any places like Deep Creek. Uh, <laughs> I love my life. I lived for many years in Deep Creek. I miss Milton and Millie were my neighbors down there. But I'm very blessed. I, you know, I, I live, you know, I'm, I'm 10 minutes away from my church, which I love, right? But it feels like I'm out in the woods. I'm five minutes from a major airline. Isn't that cool? I'm right by. How many of you are glad that Allegiant flies into Punta Gorda? Yeah. Thank you, Allegiant. And I know we have some pilots and uh, uh, stewardess and, and hosts and, and people that work there. Why well, don't I forget what you call them politically correct anymore? So, anyway, attendance, flight attendance. Thank you. Uh, sorry. Keep going. So, I'm very blessed. And while I say I'm thankful for so many things, it, while we remain thankful for our blessings, it's also important that we talk about the crazy things happening in the culture of America today. Uh, we are very blessed to have Bo and Courtney. I just saw you guys sitting. Two of our missionaries to Africa. Give them a big hand. They're in service with us today. 
But we were talking about this in our elders meeting. How many know that other countries are sending missionaries to America now? They are. Because uh, there is a mission field in our culture and all around us, guys. Crazy things are happening. We are more connected than ever before, but people are lonelier, more stressed out, more anxious, more depressed. And I want to tell you, they are less spiritual. Even though we talk about spirituality, even in the Christian church today, my fear, guys, and I say this in love, I say this in love, but I'm going to proclaim it with boldness. I fear there is a, a sort of this talk of godliness. There is this claiming that we are godly, but there's not a lot of power going on. Because what I see in the New Testament church is there wasn't just a claim of Christianity. There was change. Every time I read Acts 2 to a newcomer's group, uh, we did our one-on-one connection class last week. And every time we read Acts 2, and I read that last verse in Acts 2 that says, And there were added to their number daily those who were being saved. That's the benchmark for Steve Glover. Now, we need to disciple those people that come in. But here's what I know. You cannot have disciples if people aren't being born again. But those born-again people need to be maturing and growing up. And we're going to talk about that in the madness of what's going on in our churches today in the later message in this series. But what we need to know is young adults are leaving the faith at alarming rates. Three out of every four college-age kids are leaving the church. Leaving the church. And as much as I want to come here today and go, hey, everything's great, everything is not great. But here's what we know. We have the truth. Turn to somebody and go, truth is ours. And we're going to talk a lot today on this basic setup message about truth and what is truth and the madness of not knowing truth. We need to know Jesus Christ is still the hope of the world, but people need to see the truth. One of the tragic things that's recently come again on the radar of America is this idea of how we treat our unborn in our culture. Hey, now listen, I, I am here to say today in love that I am elated that the abortion rate in America is going down. I believe the power of God is at work in, in, our, in our societies and, and those type of things. But here's what I know. When, in 2017, 881,000 children are aborted in America. It's just in America. And that's down from almost a million two years previous. 900-something thousand unborn children. Do the math. Now listen, and I've done, I've done the, the research I can have a conversation about if a mom is in danger of death. If, if there is, even I can have the conversation about rape and incest. But what I know statistically by all sources is that's barely over 1% that happens. And if we look at a culture, and how many would say that America is a blessed nation? Come on. And God, we, I still believe that we are... I'm just going to be a little bit patriotic, the best nation on the planet. Not because of anything other than the fact that I believe that we were built on, may I say, the truth. I was, I was able to go to Washington, D.C. when I was up in West Virginia with my brother-in-law, Adam, years ago. And I, I didn't have a lot of time to visit, but we were doing a, a ministry thing there. And I went to Abraham Lincoln, the Lincoln Memorial and read, I believe it was the second inaugural address. Any, am I right there, guys, that have been to D.C.? And the amazing content that gave glory to our God. This is, this is a, a man who I believe obviously was not perfect, but he knew who the perfect God was, and it led him to lead our country through the darkest time of our nation, a, na a time when we were in upheaval about the rights of man, the rights of people of color, and all those kind of things. But a man after God's heart, based on the truth of God, stated boldly the word of God. And I'm not saying that we become a theocracy or all those kind of things. What I am saying though is when we go from there to here of seeing innocent children who have no rights, then I, I have to ask myself, what in the world is going on? That's a little bit of madness. Between 2010 and 2014, the Guttmacher Institute estimates that approximately 56 million abortions occurred each year, each year around the globe. 
This is up from an estimated 50 million abortions between the year of 1990 and 1994. We have to stop and go, what's going on? What truth would people believe? And are we as a church living the power of God in love? Because truth without love, as James McDonald has says, hear this. Truth without love today, guys, is nothing more than brutality. But when we have love and truth, the Bible says Jesus came full of what? Truth and grace. Then we have what is an amazing power to change the world. I was talking to Pastor Davey, and I'm so stoked about what's going on in our youth ministries, both at Northport and here at Punta Gorda. Kids being baptized, being saved. Hundreds of kids coming every week. Our children's ministry, you guys that are supporting our children's and youth ministries through your giving, through your support, through your volunteering. Thank you so much. How many know that kids and youth don't give a whole lot of finances? And we got a bunch of them coming. And so it's amazing when they show up. But I was sitting with Davey, and he was talking about some of the issues that were going on with their kids, how some of the parents hate the fact that their kids are coming to church. This is a different America than I grew up in. My parents used to hate the fact that I didn't want to go to church because I had a drug habit. I have to be careful how I say this nowadays. I was drugged to church all the time. My dad preached revivals. I... It was sun, su Sunday morning, Sunday night, and then he started a revival Monday. If I'm lucky, it's a Monday through Wednesday revival, but the Holy Spirit would inevitably, inevitably fall, and it'd go for weeks. And I'd be going to church literally every night. I can remember uh, there were many Sunday nights. Do you know how deprived I was as a child? My parents are here today. Here's how Satan works. He puts on the wonderful world of Disney on Sunday nights. Also, one of my favorite shows, Wild Kingdom, the Mutual of Omaha. Anybody remember Wild Kingdom? Sunday nights, that's the devil. And I got to go to church, so I would stay home with my uncle who needed Jesus. And by the time the end of the Disney show would come on, I'd be so guilty that the rapture was going to happen that night. And I'd be like, God, send my parents home so I know I'm okay. Madness. But when I hear Pastor Davey talk about our kids today, one of the things he says, Steve, talk about kids and how they view life and morality. He said, do you know it's a fact that teens today consider this. They consider if you don't recycle a plastic bottle, that's more immoral than viewing pornography. In a kid's eyes today. Fact about the United States. Yet we see rampant sexuality problems. We see rampant problems with things like rape and incest. We wonder why marriages are falling apart. We wonder why abortion rates are so high. You see, our political system is filled with more hatefulness and lack of civility than ever before. We have senators and uh, people cussing at each other and saying hateful things when they should be an example for our kids in our country how to lead. Hope is quickly turning to hopelessness. Uh, optimism is being replaced by sarcastic cynicism. What is happening? Let me just tell you, my friends, this is nothing new. This is what happens when you lose sight of the truth. Everybody say the truth. Today we're going to talk about and identify how this madness happens. Turn to Romans chapter 1. A very familiar passage of scripture if you've been around church. It is a powerful, hard-hitting word of God. And this is not because Steve is, is wanting to, to tell people how bad they are. Jesus said, I didn't come into the world to condemn the world. John 3, 17, check it out. Jesus came into the world to what? Save the world. But a world cannot be saved if they don't know they are drowning. And we have to look at the truth of the Word of God and see where the madness comes from. Romans chapter 1, please look at your Word of God today because we don't put it on the screen so you will read and see this is not Steve's words. NIV, verse 18, the wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all the godliness and wickedness of the people at all our campuses. I want you to read this next line with me. Who suppress the truth by their wickedness. You see, you, God's protection is lifted from a culture when 
Now we start suppressing the truth by our wickedness. Since that we, what may be known about God is plain to them because God has made it plain to them. For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, His eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made so that people are without excuse. Now, without getting too deep into the apologetic of this passage here, let me just tell you one thing. Even to the most skeptical, agnostic, atheistic person that may be in the room today, and I am so glad you're here, you have to admit that when you go over the 41 bridge and it's not packed with traffic and you're able to see a sunset in Charlotte County. Come on, somebody. Have you seen some of the colors of the oranges and the pinks and those kind of things? You know, and I'm, I consider myself a man's man, but man, that makes me stop and go, wow. When I'm uh, blessed to be out on the harbor and just out there, the other day, a couple weeks ago, I just took a day to go study and not really fish, but I put a fishing rod in there, you know, and, and, uh, uh, just in case. And I, I, you know, I'm watching the manatees and the rays, and I'm looking at all this intricacy. It was so beautiful down toward Burnt Store and just going, this just happened randomly? How many would say even the, the most skeptical skeptic at some point stopped and goes, I don't know, man. That almost makes me want to believe in a God because that's exactly what's happening. Creation praises our God. It goes, there is more to this beautiful intricacy of nature and beauty and color and all those kind of things than just mathematical equations. Here in Romans, in Romans it talks about that. But it goes on to say in verse 21, For although they knew God, they neither glorified Him as God nor gave thanks to Him, but became in their thinking became futile and their foolish hearts were darkened. And today in a culture in America, I fear this is what's happening. We know who God is. We know that God has blessed us, even in our churches. But we begin to suppress truth. And we become darker and darker. Although they claimed to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the mortal God for images made to look like mortal human beings and birds and animals and reptiles. And here's where we get into what happens when truth disappears. Therefore, God gave them over in the sinful desires of their hearts to sexual impurity, to the degrading of their bodies with one another. They exchanged. I want you to say verse 25 at every campus. Say it with me really loud. Read it. They exchanged the truth about God for a lie. Say it again. They exchanged the truth about God for a lie. Friends, this is a dangerous state of America. And I need you to think about this today in your family, in your life, in your school, in your recreational pursuits, in your career. What is your truth? What is your truth? Well, I'm going to tell you this. Truth is vital. We don't talk about it a whole lot, but it's essential. And when you exchange the truth of God for a lie then you will begin to live a lie and think it's true. All of a sudden, putting God ahead of, yeah, or putting this ahead of God, you know, work is important, education is important, developing your sports skills and team, and that's important. All of those things, comforts and pleasures, blessings. But how many know the blessing can never be greater than the blesser? And the moment we start putting that up, and we're very tempted to do that in America, Steve Glover included. That's the moment we begin to fall into a dangerous situation. See what happens to a society when they change the truth for a lie. They worship and serve created things rather than the creator. Cars, houses, reputation, power, who is forever to be praised. Amen. Because of this, God gave them over to shameful lusts. Even their women exchanged natural sexual relations for unnatural ones. In the same way, the men also abandoned natural relations with women and were inflamed with lust for one another. Men committed shameful acts with other men and received in themselves the due penalty for their error. Furthermore, just as they did not think it worthwhile to retain the knowledge of God, so God gave them over to a depraved mind so that they ought not, 
They do what ought not to be done, and they have become filled with every kind of wickedness, evil, greed, and depravity. Do you see our culture developing here? They are full of envy. You've got to have more. Murder. I hate you. Strife. I'm going to talk bad about you. Deceit and malice. There are gossips. There are slanderers. God-haters. Insolent. Arrogant. Boastful. They invent ways of doing evil. They make movies about it. They write songs about it. They disobey their parents. I'm amazed when I hear at the holidays these days, people come to me and go, I'm so worried about going home because of the divisiveness over truth, over philosophy of life, over politics, where they can't sit at the same table together anymore. Guys, something is maddening, is going on. Although they know God's righteous decree that those who do such things deserve death, they not only continue to do those very things, but they also approve of those who practice them. And I remember reading this in the King James, where they take pleasure in those that do them. And guys, listen, may I confess here, there are many days now when I'll watch things on Netflix or watch a movie or, 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 or listen to something on the radio or something like that, and I really need to be asking myself this question. Am I maybe hitting Romans 1.32 by being entertained by something I shouldn't be entertained by? You guys with me? I'm not here to go, hey, Steve's going to make you a list of what you can watch and can't watch right here, right? Just call me and I'll let you. No, that's not what I'm saying. But every one of us should be asking God, God, show me your truth about what should be in my brain and what should not. Because I am holy and set apart. Not because I deserve it, but because Jesus has made me that way. And I want to follow him. I want to glorify him. I want to be like him. Maybe I need to strap the WWJD bracelet back on. I don't know. I don't know. You see, truth is vital today. Speaking of shows, Hannah and I, my daughter Hannah, who's at college, she got obsessed with the show, and she's like, Dad, you got to watch it. And it was on Netflix. It was called The Making of a Murderer. Anybody see The Making of a Murderer? Uplifting show. No, I, 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 But this show was all about this guy that got sent to prison for something and then was later exonerated from that for, for something he didn't, he didn't do. And, and you, you, you're watching this show, and you're going, oh, my gosh, how could they put him in prison? How did that happen, the police department? And the, then you see them try to prosecute him again, and the prosecutor's finding and you're like, man, he's a scumbag. But then you see some stuff going on in the guy's family. You're like, I don't know about them. And you're wondering, what's the truth? It was intriguing enough. They made two successful Netflix seasons off of this one little case. And you're falling going, what's the truth? And how many know? The truth in that case, with which I don't know, but how many know the truth is the most vital thing? Because somebody is wrong, and that's true in the world today. Everybody in here, you need to know you've got to live by some form of truth, or you're going to be swayed by everything that comes along. You know, they talk about Christians being narrow-minded people. Let me just tell you, every viewpoint in the world is narrow-minded to some degree. If you are so open-minded that you don't have any foundation, your brain's going to leak out. <laughs> Every person at some point in their life goes, Christianity, I will close my mind around that truth and build my life on it. Agnosticism, there is a God, but he's not real involved. I will close my mind around that truth. There is no God. Those are your three choices right there. Or there's a bunch of gods. I close my mind around that. And you live by that. But we all narrow-mindedly seek something. Humanism, uh, secular humanism claims that Christianity is very narrow-minded and that it's wrong. And how many know that humanists are basically saying humanism is the right way and no other way? How many know that is narrow-minded? Okay, so just so we're on the same playing field and can respect each other about what is true. A company that's making a lot of money and paying you well is awesome, right? Even if they're cutting a couple corners. How many of us would say, would be honest and go, well, just as long as I don't know what they're doing until they cut your paycheck when they shouldn't. Then all of a sudden, it changes. 
when you're the victim of a lie, truth becomes very important. Oh, maybe I need to say that again. When you are the victim of a lie, truth becomes very important. We see a story of a rich man who is in hell, and the truth is made known to him. And he pleads in the story with Lazarus, with, with, with God to send Lazarus back to go tell his family. Tell them what? The truth. The truth that riches and the things of this world are not it. You see, we live in a world today, as Francis Schaeffer said, that is firmly planted. Francis Schaeffer said, modern man has both feet firmly planted in midair. Some of you aren't getting that. John 18, verse 33 through 34, Pilate is asking Jesus, are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus goes on to tell him and talk to him about being a king. And Jesus answered, you say that I am a king. In fact, the reason I was born and came to the world is to testify to the truth. Everybody say truth. Everyone on the side of truth listens to me. And Pilate responded with this question, which is the question for the day. What is truth? Ask yourself that question. What is truth? And I'm going to tell you, point number one of your handout today, if you're taking notes. What is truth? Here's what you need to know. Truth exists absolutely. There is no relative truth. In the culture today, people want to, and I'm not going to have time to fully develop this, but people today want to go, all right, listen, well, Christianity may be true for you, Carla, but it's not true for me. May I say something about truth? If something is true, it is true for everyone, everywhere, all the time. All the time. It is. Now, what you believe may be different. I can say that red is my favorite color, or I can say red is the best color there is. Actually, crimson is the best color that there is. I feel it is. Now, is that a true statement? What is true is that Steve feels that crimson is the best color, right? That is a true statement for Steve, for everybody, everywhere, everyone. You can't dispute that. You may disagree with your belief about crimson being the best color. You may be deceived into the lie that orange and blue are the best colors. But the fact is, for me at least, that is true, and no one can change that. There was a time when people thought the earth was flat. How many, know, how many people back in the... Yeah, yeah, <laughs> B.C. No, uh, how many believe there was a time when the majority of the world thought the world was flat? Raise your hand. That is true. Now, just because they thought the world was flat, did that make it true? No. Your belief doesn't change the truth. And here's what you need to know. Skeptic, atheist, agnostic, I love you guys. The fact that you don't believe in God does not make God not real. The fact that we believe in God does not make God any more real or less real. It is the fact that is God real and what does the evidence say? That's why the Bible says to love the Lord your God with your heart, soul, mind, and strength. You love him with your heart, your emotions identify. You love him with your soul, your being and will identify. But you also love him with your mind because the reason identifies with him. We are not called to blind faith, my friends. We are called to weigh the evidence, to sense in our heart, and to be drawn by the Spirit of God. And that's an amazing thing. I'm going to have to move on. You need to know that truth is absolute. Number two, truth enlightens, encourages, and empowers. And we're going to develop this over the next few weeks. What we love in church is the fact we come and be inspired. And I love to do that for you guys and root you on. You're a victor. You're a conqueror. Let's go. Steadfast. Some phrases like this. Fill in the blank. At Northport, everywhere. Do unto others. It is more blessed to give. A soft answer turns away. Wrath and anger, yes. A penny saved. It's not a scripture, but it's still a great truth. All right, see. The Lord is my, I shall not. He makes me lie down in. And we can go on and on about, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For God is with me, his rod and his staff, they comfort me. How many love those truths, baby? 
I love those truths. But when you look at truth, St. Augustine said it this way. Oftentimes we love the truth when it enlightens us, but we hate it when it convicts us. Turn to somebody and go, booyah. Now, now let me get serious with you guys. When the world can't tell the difference between a Christian and a person who doesn't follow Christ, we got a truth problem. See, the world tell, the, the word of God, the truth, Jesus is the truth, tells us if you lust after a person in your heart, you are committing adultery. The word of God tells us that if you are envious and greedy, you are not following Christ like you should. It says if you hate your brother, your sister, because of color, because of socioeconomic status, because of any reason that you are a murderer, it tells us that if you are disobedient to God, you are a rebellious person. It tells us if you are selfish, you do not know the love of God. It tells us that if you are prideful, you are in danger of being separated from God. It tells us that if you live a life of habitual sin, you need to understand the reality of hell and eternal separation from God our Father. And that, my friends, is the truth. But when we hear the truth, listen to me, spoken in love, it will change us and make us powerful. It will free you, which leads us to our last point about truth today. When we understand both sides, both grace and truth, truth emancipates us when embraced absolutely. And here's the danger. There are so many people who claim to be Christians today. My friends, listen to me because I love you. You claim Christianity, but you don't embrace the full truth of God. You can't pick and choose your truth. It's all or nothing. Jesus says you will know the truth, and the truth will make you what? How do we know the truth? Let me leave this with you today. John 16, 12 says, I have much more to say to you, more than you can bear now. But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all the truth. Everybody say, all the truth, baby. How many want to know all the truth? Some of you don't because you don't want to stop doing some of the things you're doing. Oh, yeah, I got you. I got you. Including Steve. All the truth tells me to love my wife. I go back to this one because I struggle with it. Being honest. To love my wife like Jesus loves the church. And the other day, my son Luke is doing amazing at baseball. I love Luke. I love to go to his games. He's just doing a great job. And the other day, his coach told us, you need to quit being late with Luke. He needs to be there on time. And so I, I told the family, we got to leave at this time. we got to get Luke there on time because he's going to be my ticket to retirement. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, and so my girls, all my girls, my baby, my wife, my two girls, they aren't the most prompt because they are so beautiful all the time. And I'm so thankful for that. So we were late. And how many know those seconds that are passing in the car, I am losing my salvation. <laughs> Ephesians 5, love your wife as Jesus loved the church. I'm like, I don't want to know that truth right now. Can I just be honest with you? And I was not Jesus to my wife. I was not. I was more like Lucifer to my wife. And I was, dude, I was, I got so angry. Anybody with me? And I'm a passive aggressive, so I'm stuffing it, and I can feel my body just like, yeah. The whole I didn't enjoy the whole game. Because I'm like, I can't believe this. But thanks be to God that God still forgives a messed up pastor. And here's what I know. I woke up in the middle of the night, I repented to the Lord, I woke my wife up at 4 a.m. and she didn't slap me, which was really cool. <laughs> And I went to her and I said, I'm sorry, I was stupid. Here's what I know. If I had just followed the truth to begin with, I wouldn't have been in all that bondage for all those hours. Now, it used to be days. It used to be weeks. But thank God, I'm getting more and more free because I'm living more and more of the truth every day. Amen? That's cool. You see, God is going to emancipate us. But here's what I know. But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears. He will tell you what is yet to come. He will glorify me because it is from me that he will receive 
what he will make known to you. We're going to close with this, guys. The only way you're really going to know the truth is to be full of the Holy Spirit. I don't care what your theology or background is, you need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Booyah. And how do you do that, Steve? You get on your knees, you get along with God, and you say, God, I am not going to get up until I am filled with your Spirit. And then you do it the next day, and the next day, and the next day, and the next day. And I'm going to tell you what happens is when God fills you, I mean fills you, you're going to begin to change. You're going to begin to see things about yourself you don't like, but you're going to begin to be free from yourself in a way that's going to be amazing. Because I'm going to tell you, you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Eagerly seek to be filled with the Holy Spirit, my friends. If you want to see your life change, if you want to see your family change, if you want to see your school change, if you want to see your workplace change, you need to be full of the Holy Spirit. Straight Acts 2. Number two, you need to earnestly look for the Holy Spirit to teach you all the truth. Everybody say all. Come on, say it southern. All. She's northern. All. That sounds too pretty. you got to say all. I want all. All the truth. And then number three, expect a freedom like you've never known. Expect a freedom like you have never known. Verse 17 says, now the Lord is the Spirit. I'm sorry, Corinthians 3, 17. Amplified version says, now the Lord is the Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And I love how the Amplified breaks out the word. Emancipation from bondage, true freedom. True freedom. Put your notes down, we're done. I want you to pray. Let's bow our heads. Father. There are people in this room right now, let's just cut to the chase, that are in bondage because they don't follow the truth. There are people who are in bondage in their dating and sexual life because they're picking and choosing their boundaries and not following the Word of God with purity. There are people who are bound up in their financial life because they don't give consistently out of obedience to Jesus Christ. They're in debt. They live for the moment. They spend impulsively. God, I've been there, done that. And all that is is bondage. Lord, there are people. There are marriage relationships. There are relationships with mom and dad. There are relationships with their friend. It just isn't what it should be because they're selfish. They're prideful. They're narcissistic. They worship their stuff, their reputation, their look. And God, today you're here to free them. You love them. Lord, you're not here to whip us, to make us feel bad about ourselves. You're here to reveal the truth to us and open our hearts toward the reality of the freedom. And if you're here today and you're in bondage to any of those things or anything I haven't mentioned and the Holy Spirit is bringing it to your attention right now, would you just pray, God, free me, forgive me, help me to walk in the spirit of truth. Lord, help me to learn to worship you in spirit and truth. And Lord, for those skeptics that are here today that don't know what they believe, God, may they look at Jesus Christ. May they start at the epicenter of all things, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who in turn sent us the Holy Spirit. And may they say today, Jesus, I want you. I want to follow you. I'm not sure about all of the things that follow, but I know today I need a change. And I want to put my faith in something that's real. And that as I'm not just a bunch of chemical reactions, Lord, I'm soul, I'm spirit, I'm body. And I want to serve you. All you have to do is say, Jesus, forgive me. Love me. Change me. Show me your truth. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. God, I pray today a revival or an encounter, Lord, a revolution would start in your spirit as people pursue you and pursue truth. We thank you for that opportunity to change our world. It's in the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Everybody said, amen.